Yes, please. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm here with uh, Luke Atkinson. It's very nice for you to join me and um, uh, share a couple words uh, about uh, Bill Salmon. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any good stories that you can uh, recount of maybe got how you guys met? or? Well, um, it was right at the beginning of my career uh, in tattooing career. <laughs> <laughs> my, my entry into tattooing, it was... Uh, it was quite magical because I, I started to work in Germany mm -hmm. um, and I had a chance to go to New York and I, I'm, it was, yeah, it just seemed like this road was kind of paved before me and I, I wanted to go to New Orleans to a convention I'd heard about. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have very much money in those days so uh, it was all kind of haphazard how things worked. Um, so I managed to get down to New Orleans mm -hmm. with a friend of mine from New York. The tattooing that was going on on it was a national show. Um, okay. It was it was the absolute greats from the tattoo world. Um, so I was just on cloud nine mm -hmm. when I arrived there, and uh, yeah, I met Bill and Philip pretty instantly right i think we bumped into each other and uh, we we started and that talking was, and that was around the same time when philip had moved to the states yes yeah yes mm -hmm. this was 80 i think just after 86 right so yeah as the weekend went on it was like you know you're getting these crazy impressions of beautiful tattoos mm -hmm. but also in the evening where we're all kind of sitting around in bill's room mm -hmm talking tattoos uh, a lot of recreation yeah. and uh, yeah a lot of visitors these days it was it was quite different in the sense that people would move around the hotel rooms and mm -hmm. stay up all night okay talking uh -huh. and, and you'd be be sat there with all your heroes and uh, i remember yeah, just uh, sitting in this t in this hotel room with uh, Bill, mm -hmm. Philip, and then Paul Rogers would walk in, wow. and Jack Rudy, mm -hmm. and uh, it was, I mean, the names were endless. Sure. Uh, so for me, it was, uh, it was the, the biggest backstage pass you could ever want to get. Of course, yeah. And this, this time on this visit, it's funny, I'd actually bought, like, uh, some skull shirts mm -hmm. from London from a company called La Rocca I mean for punks and uh, kind of mm -hmm. independence in those days this was the label to have from okay. King's Road in okay. London <laughs> so I bought like yeah, maybe 10 skull shirts and thought oh, I'm going to wheel and deal my way <laughs> <laughs> to pay for my trip sure. yeah, so I was wearing one of them and uh Bill, of course, being a, a very sharply dressed man, mm -hmm. keenly spotted the shirt and said, oh, where'd you get that? I want one, you know. So we actually made a deal and, and Bill tattooed me. Okay. I got this tiny little devil on my ankle with <laughs> uh, Mi Vida Loca, which was... <laughs> A, a kind of it's a Mexican saying for my crazy life right. um, and uh, this was the beginning of our friendship and yeah after that it was it it just evolved through traveling around America mm -hmm. and going to San Francisco and did you guys mostly meet up at conventions or did you make kind of special trips to kind of spend more time together well we we would work in um, for sure we would meet every year I tried to go to these national shows yeah. but I also went to San Francisco just for a, a, a feel of the city mm -hmm. and and went to visit Bill um, whilst I was there and, and he was just yeah so welcoming and uh, into the Cadillac yeah. around the city for a drive um, going bowling <laughs> eating together and just yeah really welcoming and mm -hmm. family feeling right 
and through these visits it, it was like I, I kind of said I'm interested to come back and maybe work and mm -hmm. um, it was the big real bubbly beginning of uh, San Francisco so like Everlasting and uh -huh. all these kind of new shops were opening with a lot of different characters and um, yeah Bill was really open to share it and help mm -hmm. and uh, I think I lived with him for yeah a couple of months worked down on Geary Street he got me a job at a picture machine really and, uh, <laughs> yeah wow yeah it, w it was brilliant it was really uh, yeah like I say it was just a, a family feeling mm -hmm. and yeah, that's. Uh, I was talking with Philip earlier, and that's the impression he gave me as well. It's just like he always gave this kind of family feeling, like always welcome. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, nothing, nothing was too much. He was, he was an observer of people's behaviors. He don't, I don't think he judged people too much. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he, he certainly lived through like my naive youngness yeah <laughs> like uh, I think I was in my early 20s when I was there okay so I was this kind of bubbly like full of energy yeah. and uh, and how yeah. long how long had you been tattooing before meeting him so in in 86 mm -hmm. I, th I think I'd started a few years before right. a couple of years before mm -hmm. um, yeah right at the beginning wow yeah shudder to think what I was feeling when I was standing <laughs> around uh, all these great artists mm -hmm. at that time. They all seemed to be in one room. Yeah. Yeah. Philip was young then too. Uh -huh. I got tattooed by him. Yeah, it was, it was uh, excitement. Mm -hmm. yeah, pure excitement. Right. and uh, Like winning the lottery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, everything's brand new and yeah. you don't know what to expect. And yeah. Incredible. Uh, Bill gave this uh, this real impression of um, yeah being just yeah there were no borderlines to things mm. he was he was just this this character who just endlessly had like jokes and stories mm -hmm. and is that the inspiration that he gave it was just this constant mm. that came out of him uh, you know is just not confined by any preconceived no, ideas or not at like all that. not at all <laughs> um, yeah it's so long ago it's like I'm trying to recollect the, <laughs> the, the more details yeah I mean there was tattooing going on in the room mm -hmm. um, yeah it was good that's jumping back to, to New Orleans right I think visiting San Francisco I went there twice to stay with mm -hmm. Bill and Junie mm -hmm. they the, I think the second time they had their studio like in the apartment next door okay everybody who's been to their place I mean it's just this uh, personalized haven uh, that nobody can imagine or like looking from the street uh -huh. you, you see this uh yeah, there's not a white wall in the place. It's just uh, it's colors and and uh, impressions and it's like a, a, a some sort of psychedelic shrine, if you like. <laughs> yeah. And the studio next door, what they'd done is they um, they had a closet and they'd broken like a little hole in the wall. Okay. Through to the next apartment, so. <laughs> There was this secret way to go from like their apartment into the studio, yeah. <laughs> which was great. Yeah, you go through this cupboard, through this little opening into the instead of going out uh -huh. from one part apartment to the other. Um, again, working in this place, it's, it was a studio like none other I'd been in. Mm -hmm. um, beautifully painted everything. Um, comfortable seats uh, very clean stressed on cleanliness right. and, and uh, yeah everything had its order but it was not stiff in the slightest you mm -hmm. know it was it was full of life and uh, yeah originality mm -hmm. um, wonderful place to be and this this was like a shining of what 
Bill's character was like and Junie yeah that they have this this way of making this colorful radiant place to to uh, work in mm -hmm. and make people feel uh, comfortable but never bored right yeah. <laughs> you're spending long hours getting tattooed and you you still find something new to look yeah, at yeah 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 mm -hmm. it's uh, i think this is uh yeah it's a, it's a very clever thing to do in a tattoo shop mm -hmm. because people tend to look around and focus on things because when you're getting tattooed it's such a painful thing right but if you've got all this information to look at whether it's photographs or flash or mm -hmm. nice little drawings or uh, yeah just the rack the colors are on it's right. you and get engrossed in this uh, visual mm. feast if you like right yeah. and i'm sure it inspires the client while they're getting tattooed and saying like oh maybe i could get something that looks like this yeah and exactly and exactly so, so it's almost developing and uh, it, i mean they they had an amazing collection i mean he was mm -hmm. uh, yeah he had collections of of the greats in tattooing and right not only on the walls but his his own body told uh, a tale too. yeah <laughs> um, yeah crazy and yeah just to share that stuff he had absolutely no problem showing you his tattoos and mm -hmm. uh, explaining and joking at the same time mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate enough to tattoo him as well oh wow yeah. what did you do so, on him? well I think I did one of the first logos for him of his diamond club right. so I did a kind of spaceship looking thing <laughs> on the, underneath his chin uh -huh. and um I did a snake on his wrist mm -hmm. with a diamond as well, and uh, yeah, it was great. And I tattooed Junie at the same time with an off the wall. Actually, that was a, a wonderful story. They they took me down. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but it was kind of down, maybe on the wharf in San Francisco. Right. And there were all these old uh, kind of sort of fairground machines mm -hmm. from the I guess the 40s or 50s old things you put it like 10 cents in okay. and then these these puppets that dance yeah. and whatever um, so we were down there and we were looking around and they had a, a really old gumball machine and Junie was just fascinated with it all these different colored balls uh -huh. in this gumball machine and we went home later and she's like, look, look, I want to I wanna get this tattoo. I want to get this gumball machine on my <laughs> leg, you know. And I was like, oh, really? Uh, what about we wrap a snake around it? You know, like, <laughs> so it was, this was like San Francisco, anything goes. Right. Nobody else ever asked me for a gumball machine. Sure. It? <laughs> so, um yeah, all these inputs of, of being with Bill um, mm -hmm. and Junie were, were yeah, great yeah. eye-openers. And, uh, yeah, I have very fond memories. And it's, it's a big... It was a big chance they gave me to, to grow and see mm -hmm. another... Um, well, it's kind of the mecca of tattooing. Yeah. At the time, it was mm -hmm. uh, incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, I wish yeah. I was old enough to be there at that time, during yeah, that time period. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, do, I mean, I do feel blessed if I look at tattooing today. I mean, the, the, how fortunate it was mm -hmm. uh, for me to, yeah, just be in tattooing at this period. Mm -hmm. And to keep, keep with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that, um, you know, a lot of stuff that you learned uh, during your time with Bill... Um, you still kind of carry today it's always like uh, something that is in definitely, the back of your mind yeah definitely mm -hmm. yeah being being uh, with there was a project when i was there um that came about we were we were all sitting around and and bill had this vision of uh doing this giant hanya on this friend of theirs avery mm -hmm. who was quite tattooed but he had kind of big spots um, free. Bill wanted to do this like the biggest hanya in the world, yeah. and, and it was this 
face where the, the is a profile picture of a hand yeah the horn actually went up the arm when he stretched his arm up right. and the nostrils are on the buttocks and uh, the teeth are on the back of the legs mm-hmm. and and incorporating all these little funky tattoos that the guy already had so he had a little like tweedy bird pulling a rope which came <laughs> out of the the nose of the hand yeah and i just <laughs> i mean it was just unbelievable mm. so this what it what happened was this got drawn on paper um over and over um to kind of get to where we wanted to go right and then um it was drawn on avery uh to get the idea photographed and then and then the just the project started and um, we were tattooing him with four people um, not for crazy amounts of hours as you can imagine but um, I think I, I was fortunate enough to be there twice mm-hmm. to work on it and um, yeah but this I believe is still one of the biggest tattoos I've ever seen yeah, yeah. the b- so biggest Hanya I've seen yes, tattooed on somebody yes. Yeah, I saw it recently because uh, you had posted it uh, not too long ago. Yes. And yes. I thought it was very clever with the, the horn of the Hanya, right. how it went up on the right. arm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. almost like uh, once he sets the pose, it completes the tattoo. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a cool what concept. The, yeah, abs- and absolutely Bill. Mm. You know, this was Bill's idea, his vision. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, amazing. So great to be a part of these things. Mm. Um and to meet them last year here, Avery actually showed up. Oh, and, yeah. uh, so we were able to see it 15 years down the line and uh, it's still complete. And yeah, it's, <coughs> it's, yeah, it's something from the past. And Incredible. I don't think it's, yeah, it's not been approached again yet. No. You know, not in that, that size. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I think it was nice for, yeah, to get a picture of us all together with it. It's perfect um, yeah. when it was complete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I always admire about uh, you guys as a whole is that you know tattooing is always evolving and developing. Yeah. But you guys still have you're still on the top of the the crest of the wave of the <laughs> cre- creativity and stuff like that because there's so many new things yes. happening, and you can almost get lost in all these different genres. But you know. In, a, in, in some way it's all the same but what you guys are doing in that approach is brand new in a sense. Wow, it's nice to hear. I d- it's my opinion. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, d- I think, I mean, um, the friendships that you create in tattooing and also your, your, your peers, your, well, I mean, one thing that's very n- nice is like we, we kind of share pictures like in the old days mm-hmm. you'd probably send a letter to yeah. somebody with a few pictures and mm-hmm. they'd send you a letter back today it's possible to do it quite instantly yeah um but it's still personal so you send it to one person mm-hmm. they send you some back and you have a look and you're like oh yeah and, you know, and it keeps the fire going i'm not a, a, a very good with social media mm-hmm so facebook and uh, i try i tried but i'm just i'm just not made for this work. stuff yeah so i don't actually feed myself through that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. it's um yeah it's too instant yeah it's exactly what it is you know it's like there's the the value is taken down so much because mm-hmm. you're per- on permanent overload right so um I think honestly you're better off because the input coming in is what everybody's seeing. So yes. if you want something original or maybe something from a source, yes, it doesn't come from sifting through no, files no, on no, a no. on a phone. It comes no, no. from you know books. It comes from interacting with people who are also like-minded yes. and creative. I mean, uh, going back to Bill, yeah, and it, I mean he was such a a magician at making people feel comfortable Mm. people he didn't know you know it was like he he had a moment for everybody uh he made people 
blessed even walking around on this show mm. is I've had a lot of people come up to me and just yeah it's it's nice for me first of all to to spend a moment with them but listen to them saying I'm so happy I got to have a few words with Bill yeah. and he made me feel great mm. he made me feel yeah larger than life and uh, mm -hmm. for for those short moments and uh, no it was a, a real genuine emotional feeling for mm. them and so yeah that was definitely my experience last year yes and, and all I did was shake his hand and say hello but I just felt that I came b away with meeting someone of importance like yeah you know. v genuine mm -hmm. to yeah. the max mm -hmm. genuine to the max um yeah, he's a very sweet man. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, by the way, Luke, uh, I got this rose on my hand. And <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of special, this rose. And he get a little vial out of his pocket, uh -huh. you know, and dab a few drops on the rose. And he's like, uh, what's this? So he walk up to someone and tell them about the rose. And then he's like, yeah, you can smell my <laughs> rose. Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's just great. Yeah. I mean, there was. I mean, there's endless ones. I'm trying to rack my brains, but um, yeah, he he had a pocket full of gadgets, gimmicks, little giveaways. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just always on, on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and I always try to like. I always try to be a bit like that, and I'm so slow. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I managed last year, actually, to get, like, uh, I thought, oh, God, damn, Bill's going to have a pocket full of shit, you know? I've got to, I've got to like, come to the convention <laughs> with something for someone. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, last year I managed to find these little checkered cabs. You push the, the, the taxi oh, sign yeah, in, yeah. Li -li -li, you know, yeah. the light comes on, like, so uh, I managed last year, which is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep up with him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like seeing that you uh, drive the cab to London. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Finally, it's <laughs> back on the road. <laughs> Ten years it's taken me. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you have any other I'm stories. I'm happy. Um, I guess one. Uh, what I probably like to say also is. Um, through all the time, I mean, since 86, it's it's been a long, long time that I've uh, known Bill and Junie. Mm. Um, of course, my my life on the road, as it were, traveling in the world, um, that kind of faded a little when I got kids and I wasn't quite as active as I used to be. Mm -hmm. So my connection with Bill was like very, very quiet for a little while um, we had mutual friends mm -hmm. so we would we would have a chat here and there on, on FaceTime um, but through mutual friends always little hellos and uh, greetings passed through people which was totally Bill you know it's like not a uh, he likes personalizing things yeah. right. but what Tintin put on here and started inviting us to be the, the judges. Mm -hmm. The regularity of seeing Bill and Junie once a year here and also them traveling to London and um, well it was just that icing on the cake mm -hmm. for especially what's happened with the passing of Bill that yeah. I can honestly look back at the last four five years um, as magical times mm. that um, yeah have happened here in Paris and London and and it yeah time as far as time goes nothing changed mm -hmm. you know we were happy to see each other we had good fun mm -hmm. um, yeah and he still put a smile on my face and I hope likewise for him. I'm sure he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Long live Bill Salmon. Long live. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. And I really appreciate it. And I'm sure people who are fond of him will really appreciate it as well. Yeah, it's from the heart. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.